I'm going to show you my six step color grading process when using Color Phenomena. But I don't have Color Finale, you say. Don't worry, the wonderful people over at Color Finale are giving away two copies of Color Finale 2 Pro, as well as their Mega Light Bundle to two of you guys. So stick around. For this tutorial, we're going to use this Mini 3 Pro drone shot of Albufeira in Portugal. And I'm going to just drop Color Finale 2 Pro onto the clip. And then I'm going to double click on the top of my inspector to make this window full screen. If you shot in log, you'd want to come over to your color management section here before you start and change this to assume log. You'll see in this case, it's a bit too contrasty. So I'm just gonna go with assume video and do my grade from there. Now, step one is to set the correct black and white values. And we're going to do that while watching our scopes. You can bring your scopes window up by using the shortcut command seven. And I'm going to open up my edit layers section and add a color wheels adjustment to this clip. The first thing I'll do is take my shadows over here and I'll drop them so that they are just above zero IRE on the waveform. If you want some areas that are totally black in your scene, let's say you have a dark area underneath the tire of a car that you know would be true black, then you might want to crush this level just a little bit below zero. But for this shot, I'm going to stick it right above zero and I'm going to adjust my highlights until they're just under 100. And because the shot was shot quite flat, I'm going to boost the saturation a little bit here just so we get a bit of color into this scene. If you shot in a normal color profile, you might skip the saturation step. Now I like to stay organized and this is what I love about Color Finale. I can click on these layers and rename them. So I'll call this black white values and hit return to rename that layer. Now I can't do that with my different layers in Final Cut Pro. Step two is to adjust the contrast. And I like doing that with a curves adjustment. I'm going to drop this below this layer and I'm going to rename this to contrast. I'll create a simple S curve to begin with here, just darkening some of these shadows, brightening some of the highlights. And I might just fiddle with this a little bit just to get a look that I'm happy with. Step three is to correct the white balance. Luckily in this scene, we have a lot of white that we can use to accurately correct the white balance. Color Finale has a little color picker tool. So I'll select that and just select an area of true white. And now that's a balanced image, but this was shot early morning. So I know there was a little bit of that golden hour orange glow. So I can always come in here and just adjust the temperature a little bit, just so we've got some of that orange back in the scene. Step number four is to create a look or a mood. And now there are many ways to do it, but I'm going to show you my two favorite ways to do it. The first way is to use your six vectors adjustment layer. So I'm gonna drop that down below and I'm going to call this look. What I'm going to do in this case is select the yellow color, which you'll find on this beach, and I can adjust the hue. If I do it drastically, you can see what difference it's making here, but I'm going to kind of push it a little more towards an orange red color, and I might boost the saturation of that just a little bit. You can also play with the brightness if you'd like to darken those areas or brighten them up. I think I'll just reset that because I like it where it is. Then in the blue areas here, I'm going to brighten them up slightly and I'm going to change the hue to a more sort of aqua teal color and I'll boost the saturation. And under the aqua, I might just also go a little bit more towards blue and I'll boost the saturation there as well. So if we take a quick look at the look we've created there, you'll see we've created a nice summery vibe in my opinion and I think that looks really good. I'll turn this look layer off quickly to show you the second method and that is to add a LUT. So I'll click over here to open up the LUTs preview and there's a bunch of different LUTs that are built in that I can choose from or you can use one of the many LUTs in Color Finale's Mega LUT Pack which is made up of nine different LUT packs with some incredible LUTs and not only do you stand a chance of winning that with Color Finale 2 Pro, if you don't win they're also on sale right now. Let's pick any one of these LUTs and you'll see we've created a look which is quite saturated in this one, but you can also go ahead and adjust the intensity slider of that light. So you can change how much of that light is being applied to the clip. Another thing I like to play with is the blend mode. So I can go here and select a soft light blend mode, and then using the intensity slider, you can dial in how much of that look you want. By playing around with different LUTs, different blend modes, and changing the intensity, you can get some really unique looks really quickly using LUTs. Let's say for the sake of this example though, we're happy with the look we created. I'm going to turn that light off, but there are some additional things you can do to really make this image pop and Color Finale makes these things really easy to do. Step number five is to make some creative tweaks. 
Right now, the sky is quite bright and my eye is sort of drawn upwards to the sky instead of focusing on this beach. So what I'd like to do is just add a curves adjustment, which I'll drop right down below, and I'm going to label it darken sky. Now the changes I'm going to make here are going to affect the whole image, but that's just for now. So let me drop the brightness here. Pay attention to the sky. That's what we're really grading here. And I'm going to just create a little bit of contrast here in the sky. It's a little dark, maybe something like that will do. Obviously the bottom part of the image looks horrible at the moment, but what we're going to do is add a mask to this layer. Now, if I click on the mask, I can add an edge mask. And what's really cool about this is I can go ahead and feather it out. The further away I pull it from the center point, so I'm going to do a feathering something like that and just move this mask up into the sky. So at a quick glance, this is what that does. We just darken up that sky a little bit, drawing your eye more to the center of the frame. Now, if we scrub through the shot, you'll see that I actually tilted the camera down. So you start to lose the sky, which means that that mask needs to move. Luckily, Color Finale allows us to track that mask. With the mask selected, I can just track forwards. Notice how that mask is being tracked. And as the sky sort of moves out of the frame at the top of the frame, that mask follows that movement. Perfect. And now we have a wonderfully tracked edge mask for the sky. Step number six is final adjustments. Now, if I have a person in the shot, this is the step where I would go ahead and make sure the skin tone is correct after all of these adjustments we've made. In this case, we don't have skin tone to worry about, but Color Finale makes correcting skin tones super easy. So stick around because in the additional features section of this video, I'm going to break down how to correct the skin tones on a really difficult shot with a harsh color cast. For this shot though, Let's say I want to draw your eye more to this beach and I want to affect only this beach area over here. What I'm going to do is add another color wheels adjustment. I'll drop that down below. And in this case, I'm going to boost the saturation of the beach and I might just brighten it up slightly. You know, maybe something like that, pull down the shadows to keep that contrast. Again, I'm affecting the whole image here, but this time I'm going to use the pen tool to draw a mask around this area. You can already see the effect it's starting to have as we draw this mask. And I'm going to feather this mask, maybe let's say around 30%. And I'm going to track this mask like I did before. What I love about Color Finale 2 Pro's tracking is that you can track more complex shapes than you can with Final Cut Pro's tracking. And for the sake of staying organized, I'm going to relabel this adjustment to Beach. And if I turn that layer on and off, you can see the difference it makes. It just brightens up that beach and draws your eye more to the beach. Let's summarize what we did here. We set the correct black and white values to start. Then we adjusted the contrast. Then we corrected the white balance. And then we created a look or a mood for the shot. Then we made some creative tweaks to the sky. And finally, we made some final adjustments to the beach. Here is the original shot. And here is the final shot. One of my favorite additional features in Color Finale 2 Pro is the camera matrix. And this is especially handy if you have a color cast on your talent skin and you have a difficult time correcting the skin tone. So let's add the Color Finale Pro plugin to this clip and head over to edit layers and add a camera matrix layer. Now, what I'm going to do next is just head over to the image analysis section and I'm going to isolate a portion of the frame using the rectangle. So let's make this smaller and I'm going to drop it on this guy's forehead so that his skin tone fills this rectangle. Now, if I go over to my vector scope and I show the skin tone indicator line, you'll see that the skin tone here is far off this line where it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and play with these primary values to kind of get that skin tone back to where it should be. By adjusting these, I can pull the skin tone back onto that line. I can also boost the saturation a little bit if I need to. And now that skin tone falls perfectly on the skin tone indicator line. So I'll go back to my image analysis section and set this back to none. If you have a quick look at the before and after there, you can see we've gotten rid of that heavy purple color cast. Now this image still needs a little bit of work. I'm not going to go too in depth integrating this, but what I will do is just adjust the black and white values slightly just to kind of get the contrast right. And I'm going to saturate this as well because it's fairly undersaturated. And really quickly, just like that, we were able to correct the skin tone on what is normally an incredibly difficult scenario to get accurate skin tones. Another feature I love is the ability to create sync groups. So let's, for example, say we've got a couple of shots from the same shoot. I've got them over here on my timeline. 
and I'm going to just paste this color finale effect onto this clip. Now you'll see these warning messages here and that's because we've got some tracked masks which would need to be retracked on this new shot if you want those exact same changes to apply. In this case, I'm just going to delete those two adjustments and now we have this gray that we've created applied to this clip. I'll go over to my sync group over here and I'll add a new group. Let's just call this drone shots for now. Now, if I go over to the other clips that I've got on this timeline and I apply a Color Finale Pro plugin to that clip, I can then just change the sync group here to drone shots. And I immediately have the same grade. And if I copy and paste that, which will keep the sync group intact, I have the same grade on all of those shots. There are a couple of additional features that I really like in the layers panel. One of those being the shuffle layer. I'll drag that to the bottom. And what the shuffle layer allows you to do is to mix the red, green, and blue layers and shuffle them around to create really unique looks. So as a quick example, let's just swap the red for blue and the blue for red. And maybe you want to set the green to a darker black. Now, if you go to your blend modes and you select something like soft light, you can use this intensity slider to just bring in a slight change of color. Playing around with a shuffle filter will allow you to create some really unique looks. You also have an option to add a filter. And on the filter, you've got different kinds of blurs, but I really enjoy using the sharpness filter. I feel like I get much better results from this than I do from Final Cut Pro's built-in sharpener. Let's just set this back to 100%. I'll turn this shuffle layer off for now, and I'm going to zoom in here so you can have a look at what is happening. I'll bump the sharpness up to around 30%, and let's have a look at before applying sharpening and after. It's a really nice, pleasing looking sharpen filter. So I find myself using this quite a lot. Another newer feature is the log wheels. And this is really nice if you've shot footage in log and let's say you've used a LUT to convert it to a Rec. 709 color space. You can then use these log wheels to adjust your image and you have a lot more latitude to grade the shot. And finally, because I like staying organized, another feature I really like is the ability to group some of these effects and put them in a folder. So let's say these first few adjustments, I'd consider my color correction steps and these additional adjustments, I would consider my grading steps. I could put those into two different folders and I can turn that off. So I've got my initial correction from my log footage to a standard sort of neutral shot. And then I have all my different grading layers that I've applied to the shot. Color Finale 2 Pro is an incredible color grading plugin and I use it all the time. If you'd like to get your hands on it, Make sure you enter the giveaway down below or use the coupon code BRAD20 at checkout to get 20% off.